Welcome back to the program. And now here are some of your stories in brief. We begin with Kerry State, where the governor, Mr. Atiku Bagudu, is asking those behind the Revolution Now protest to understand the environment. The government is operating to improve the economy. Governor Bagudu explains that the protesters must contextualize their frustrations and embrace the measures the government have put in place to reposition the economy. Elsewhere, one of the tasks that the United Assembly must take up urgently is the passage of the Federal Audits Commission Bill. Going by the report for the Center for Social Justice, the nation is losing about 1 to 200 billion naira annually owing to non-passage of the bill. Rising from a meeting in Abuja, the group expressed concerns over the situation, urging the presidency to make pronouncements on the status of the bill, which is currently with the executive. Now, it is a day after the Revolution Now protest and the presidency reacted to the outcome of the demonstration. The presidential spokesperson, Mr. Garbashehu, in a statement says that while a few persons joined the protest on personal grounds, many others chose to ignore uh, the call to join the protest. According to him, the president is humbled by the support not for himself or the ruling party, but for the democratic values of modern-day Nigeria through the wisdom of those millions of citizens who prefer to defend democracy and decided not to undermine an elected government. Well, let's find out more about the mood at the State House. Our correspondent, Gloria Muzuke, is live for us there. Uh, Gloria, tell us what's happening at the seat of part today. Well, thank you, Millicent. The mood is all calm here at the presidential villa, uh, but we understand that some groups would uh, be here to uh, see the president later today at the State House. Uh, if you recall, in the last three weeks, the president has been receiving traditional leaders and uh, groups, uh, some of them from the southwest, from the south-south, uh, I mean monarchs, and then uh, many of the meetings have focused on the state of security in the country. Uh, the southwest leaders have talked about uh, how uh, to read the region of uh, mob in miscreants and uh, bandit, bandits, uh, kidnappers and the rest of it. And the president has been given his word, actually uh, uh, narrating tips and strategies of how he intends to address the security situation in the country. Uh, if you could recall, uh, this is part of a three-pronged mandate of the president's security, anti-corruption and the economy. And so we expect that many of these meetings from these groups and traditional leaders, uh, uh, subsequent ones, will be telling us of how much progress they have made in this regard. In the meantime, uh, we know that preparations are in top gear to receive the 43 ministers designate who will be uh, inaugurated later. Uh, of course, their retreat comes up next week, Thursday and Friday. And so, uh, as a matter of fact, today we understand that the ministers designate were at the Secretary to the Government of the Federation's office receiving documents ahead of the meeting, uh, at the retreat coming up on Thursday and Friday next week. Uh, after all of these happens, uh, we know that the President will be inaugurating the minister's uh, designate. And we'll have uh, more information for you as it all unfolds. Thank Millicent. you so much. Thank you, Gloria Mezzucre. And I know that's what a lot of people also want to know, the portfolios are for the cabinet members. Elsewhere, the Middle Belt Forum, they're asking the federal government to prescribe felony herdsmen whom they accuse of committing genocide against their people, the group comprising states in the North Central region. They made the demand at a forum in Abuja. Take a listen. Neti Allah should have been proscribed as a trade union and declared terrorist in line with the international assessment and categorization. Good governance does not, does not exist without the rule of law. Uh, if you remember, uh, international uh, uh, organs uh, I think categorized the Fulani Hadsmen as the fourth most deadly terrorist group in the world. Yet, our country see them as uh, friends rather than as enemies of the state. We would and should keep a close eye on the reintroduction of the Inland Waterways Bill by the presidency in this ninth National Assembly. The bill seeks to take away all rivers, their banks to some kilometers, from state control to federal control, and therefore take away ancestral lands for the exclusive use of the federal government. 
Your guess is as good as mine on what would happen next. Our National Assembly members must resist and reject the passage of that bill. Well, let's turn our attention to electoral matters. We hear the sixth biennial General Assembly of the Equus Network of Electoral Bodies is holding in Abuja and with a focus of inclusive participation in electoral processes in the West African sub-region. Particularly, the meeting is also focusing on putting in place a legal and policy framework and practical steps to enhancing the involvement of women, youth and persons living with disabilities. Let's get a sense of what's happening. We have our correspondent live for us there, Amaka Okafo. Amaka. We are the sixth General Assembly of ECOWAS Network of Electoral Commissions, which is the umbrella body for electoral managers in the West End of Britain. This particular um, assembly is focusing on inclusive participation in electoral processes in the West African um, states, and with a particular um, attention being paid to the participation of women, youth, and persons living with disabilities, and they will be trained the various legal frameworks and putting in place processes that will ensure the effective participation of this group of persons in electoral process in the West African region. The Assembly will also afford them the opportunity to elect their next SO, which will take over from the current led by the Chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Yaqub Muhammad, and the Assembly will come to a, to a close tomorrow, perhaps with the committee, and then after the election. Thank you, Amaka. That developing story will bring you some more much later today. In the meantime, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Movement, PDM, in the 2019 general elections, Mr. Amin Chihabu, says he and his party were not correct to withdraw their petition against the election of the president. He explained that rather it was to give way for good governance, as promised by President Muhammad Buhari, who, according to him, has also promised that the voice of the minority which he represents will be heard. He made the clarifications while briefing journalists in Abuja. There he denied the claim in some quarters that he and his party were paid to withdraw the petition from the tribunal. Well, as the Bayasa State Governor, Sirica Dixon, rounds up his second term tenure, he has also listed the qualities he wants in his successor. The governor, who says he is leaving behind a big shoe to fill, expects his successor to face a clear-cut agenda and ideologies for every sector of the economy in the state. He says he must also be principled, bold and courageous. Well, in view of the challenges facing the state, Mr. Dixon said the state cannot have what he described as an errant boy for a governor. And the People's Democratic Party in Akwaibom State says there is no truth in the allegation that the PDP and other respondents are attempting to tamper with any evidence whatsoever at the governorship election tribunal in Uyo, the state capital. The PDP publicity secretary, Mr. Ini Ememobong, stated this at a media briefing in Uyo, addressing journalists. He says the evidence tendered by the petitioner have been duly marked and recorded by the court, therefore are now the property of the court kept in safe custody. Second respondent and all the All Progressives Congress Aquam State Chapter in their continuous unhindered retrogressive political expedition served the entire public, especially discerning minds, a very unpleasant literary piece addressed by them for want of a more fitting name. Well, that's the program this hour. Many thanks for watching. I'm Millicent Walker. I'll see you soon.